Okay. You want to do another one? More. More. About, I want more. How about this one? Okay. We got four premises this time. Not to be a third. More premises, the better. The more premises you have, the more you have to work with. So I actually like arguments with extra premises. What we're going to do this time around, so they have inference rules and replacement rules to work with. I'm just looking at the premises, looking for some pattern. Uh, there's more than one way to handle things. One way is to just look at the premises and find something to do, to get started. Uh, you know, there's lots of combinations here. My mind's a small, simple little thing, and my wife reminds me of that regularly. Uh, so what I'm doing is I focus my attention on the smallest thing first. This was not isn't even a good tip. I'm just it's just what I do. Now I'm saying where the the J kind of hooks up. It hooks up here, but I don't see any way to work these guys. J also hooks up here. Ah, I see a modus tollens. So I'm going to do a modus tollens. Why? No good reason. It's there to be done. Modus tollens is a basic rule. It's probably worth doing. I'll also tell you. If you think, you know, you, you see in your mind's eye you can do a modus tollens, but you don't see any point in it, I suggest you write it down and do it. Because oftentimes, actually writing the modus tollens move, or any move, writing it down on the piece of paper will help you see what you might want to do next. If you just keep it in your head, sometimes it's not as easy. Now, I can certainly use these two lines again, but I've got a brand new small thing. And again, my mind is a small little thing. That tilde L. So I'm looking to see where tilde L might hook up. I see an L here. And I go, aha, disjunctive syllogism. I'll do that. Why? I don't know. It's there to be done. So I'll go ahead and do the disjunctive syllogism. DS3, 5. Okay. And as soon as I write that O down, I'm checking out this other line I haven't used. Notice, by the way, I've used lines 1, 2, 3, and 5. I've used 1, 2, 3, and 5. I can certainly use them again. I have not used 4 and 6. So a little bit of a tip. If you get stuck, take a look at the lines you haven't used yet, particularly the last thing you came up with. Oftentimes, that'll be the next thing you'll want to do. In this case, if I use 4 and 6, I can do a modus ponens, which I'm going to do because modus ponens is my friend. Almost never lets me down. Worth doing and socially acceptable. Okay, J wedge M. What the heck do I do with that? Well, I'm looking for J's and M's. There's that tilde J again. I'm thinking again, another disjunctive syllogism. That's going to be 2, 7. Getting a little closer to the conclusion. The conclusion has an M and a tilde J. Well, there's an M. Here's a tilde J. I can use conjunction to put them together. That would give me that part of the conclusion. Let's do that. I get to pick what order I put them in. A little bit of wind here. And that's going to be conjunction 2 and 8. Oh, I'm losing it. All work done. Okay, like conjunction 2 and 8. We battle weather and harsh elements for you guys. Okay, I guess I got that part of the conclusion. Now all I need is the wedge J. But I can do that with addition. The fact there's J's floating up here and I'm hip deep in J's is irrelevant. I'm going to pull a J out of thin air. I'm going to add it to this. So there's the J I want right here. Pop it out of thin air. And that's going to be add. Nine. And there's the conclusion. It's not the cleanest thing I've ever seen. We just love wind in Seattle. But, but let me comment then Dude. on Mark's uh, proof. Notice that when he did addition, he wrapped this in parentheses before he added the J. So basically, he took <coughs> line 9 and he brings it down, wraps it in parentheses so that it forms a complete logical unit unto itself. Then he puts the wedge next to it. Then he adds J. Of course, could you have added A here? I could have added anything I wanted. Could you have added not E? I could have added not E. Could you have added not Z? That too. Not H? Uh, yeah, even that. You can add anything you anything want. Anything I want, yeah. And, but he added J, of course, because he wants to reach this. Um, so wrap it in parentheses and then add when it's a compound formula. That's a nice proof. Notice... Um, that as Mark is going down the proof, he's looking for patterns. He's got the eight inference rules in mind. He's looking for patterns. He sees that this matches this, which lets him do a modus ponens. He sees that this and this are opposites, 
excuse me, he sees that uh, this, oh, there we go. this and this are opposites and that's going to let him do a modus tollens. He sees that uh, this and this are opposites and that lets him do a disjunctive syllogism. So he's looking for patterns corresponding to the rules. When he sees a pattern, he applies the rule and brings it down. Is that a fair description of your thought mm -hmm. processes? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Thank you. Good.